Let's get a really solid foundational understanding on pulmonary artery catheters. I'm Sarah. I am a critical care nurse educator and the founder of ICU Nurse. I take critical care concepts and break them down into easily digestible concepts that simply just make sense. And in today's video, we are covering pulmonary artery catheters and specifically the anatomy of PA catheters. So PA catheters are a type of invasive balloon tipped catheter that allows us to get information on the function of the heart itself. We can do this by obtaining direct measurements of right-sided cardiac function and filling pressures, as well as indirect measurements of left-sided cardiac function and filling pressures. It also provides an estimation on cardiac output via the principle of thermodilution. So the insertion of a pulmonary artery catheter can happen at the bedside, in the OR, or in the cardiac cath lab. If you're a critical care nurse, you may be the one assisting with the insertion if it's done at the bedside. They must be inserted into an introducer or a sheath that terminates in a large central vein. Those veins can include the femoral vein, internal jugular veins, subclavian veins, or antecubital veins. Once it's inserted into one of these large central veins, it's going to basically be floated through the right side of the heart from the right atrium through to the ventricle, and eventually it will terminate into the pulmonary artery. That's where the tip of the PA catheter actually does terminate. As critical care nurses, I cannot stress enough the importance of having a really good understanding on the functionality, anatomy, and information that PA catheters actually provide us. But you know, I'm a firm believer that in order to fully understand and interpret the information that PA catheters do give us, we have to know what the heck we're dealing with. So I think it's very imperative that we become comfortable and knowledgeable about all the components that a PA catheter has in and of itself. So let's talk about the anatomy of PA catheters. This is what a pulmonary artery catheter looks like outside of the body and while it is inserted into a MAC introducer. You can see all the components right here. The first thing I wanna cover is the syringe that is connected to the red port of the PA catheter. So every PA catheter comes with its own unique syringe that is used to inflate the balloon located at the tip of the catheter with air. We'll get into the balloon itself later, but the first thing I want you to remember is do not throw this syringe away. These syringes are unique because they do not allow you to pull back more than 1.5 mLs of air. That is because you should never inflate the balloon of a PA catheter with more than 1.5 mLs of air. As I stated, the syringe connects to this red lumen on the PA catheter, and the red lumen has a locking mechanism in it, so you can see that when this arrow is out of alignment, so it's not straight, it is considered to be locked. When it is in alignment or straight, it is considered to be unlocked. When the red lumen is unlocked, it allows for the air to inflate the balloon. The balloon serves two main purposes. Number one, it aids in floating the catheter to the proper position, which is terminating in the pulmonary artery, but it also allows us to obtain a pulmonary artery wedge pressure. So something that I cannot stress enough is that obtaining a pulmonary artery occlusion pressure, also known as a wedge pressure, is not appropriate for all patients and it comes with its own set of risk. And I mean serious risks. So always ensure that actually obtaining a wedge pressure is within your facility's policy, that you have an order, and that you have a really good understanding on what you're actually doing. In addition to that, always make sure that you truly know the position of your PA catheter before inflating the balloon. And let me tell you why. If it's not in a proper position, so say the PA catheter has migrated into a more distal pulmonary artery and you go to inflate that balloon, you run the risk of pulmonary rupture, which is a huge emergency that has a high mortality rate. If you are obtaining a PA OP, so a wedge pressure, never inflate the balloon for more than 15 seconds or two breath cycles. So when you inflate the balloon, it is going to float to a more distal pulmonary artery and occlude blood flow forward or more distal to that balloon itself. So just like any other type of occlusion within the body, if we have an occlusion, that area distal to the occlusion is not getting blood flow and thus not getting oxygen. And eventually with enough time of having that be present, we're going to have infarction. So pulmonary infarction can also happen if we are inflating for too long. So like I said, 
if your facility actually allows you to, make sure you really understand what you're doing if you're obtaining wedge pressures. And if your facility does not allow you to obtain wedge pressures, typically what we will do is just use the pulmonary artery diastolic. It can be interchanged in many cases, not all cases with our patients, but in many cases. So you may just be using the pulmonary artery diastolic number for your wedge pressure when it comes to obtaining the rest of your calculations. Lastly, it's very important to remember to allow the balloon to passively deflate. The next port of discussion is the blue lumen or the proximal injectate lumen. This lumen terminates in the right atrium and it will be connected to your transducer system to obtain right atrial pressures and it is where you will inject for intermittent cardiac output measurements. The white lumen, also known as the VIP lumen, also terminates in the right atrium, and it has the sole purpose of being used for the administration of fluid or medications. That's it. The yellow lumen is the pulmonary distal lumen, which terminates in the pulmonary artery. This lumen will also be connected to your transducer system, and it obtains pulmonary artery pressures and pulmonary artery occlusion pressures when the balloon is inflated. In addition to that, you can also obtain an SVO2 or mixed venous oxygen sample. Speaking of SVO2, some PA catheters have this little piece, which is the oximeter connector, which allows for continuous monitoring of SVO2 levels when connected to your monitoring system. This is the thermistor connector, and it connects to your bedside monitor as well, which allows for the measurement of core temperature and is used when obtaining manual cardiac output measurements. Each catheter will have thick lines and thin lines. These lines represent centimeter markings and will assist with knowing where the catheter position is. A thick line represents 50 centimeters and a thin line represents 10 centimeters. You want to measure the estimated centimeter marking at the level of the cordis, introducer, or sheath. You must know the centimeter marker of the catheter because it allows you to assess if the catheter has moved or is out of position. Each catheter should have a protective sheath, also known as a swandum, inserted over it. It has to be inserted prior to the insertion of the catheter itself, and it serves the purpose of keeping the catheter sterile in case the catheter needs to be repositioned. Some swandums have the added benefit of being able to lock the catheter in place at the appropriate position. As I said earlier, PA catheters have to be inserted into an introducer or sheath of some sort. If you're unfamiliar with the various lines that you will encounter in critical care, don't worry, I have a resource that I will link below that covers all of them. Anyway, this is a MAC introducer. So like I said, when you are actually looking at the positioning and seeing where the centimeter markings are, you are gonna to wanna to look at the top of the cordis introducer or sheath. So you can see that there's one thick line and two small lines. So that is roughly 70 and then you have to count backwards. So this is roughly about 69 centimeters is what the marking would be. The centimeter marking is an estimation because there obviously are not black lines for every centimeter. So it takes practice and just know that you are somewhat guesstimating on the placement in between. So there you have it. That's the anatomy of PA catheters. Let me know in the comments below the most helpful component of this video. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I hope to see you on the next one.